Hi, I'm Pam Jones and welcome to Local Politics 101. Today I have Mike Sullivan here with me and Mike, I know that you are the town administrator and you've done this for a number of years. How many years? Yep, I, in February I just started my 39th year, so I finished 38 years in Medfield and prior to that I had six and a half years uh, as assistant uh, town manager in Arlington, Massachusetts, since there are so many Arlingtons. <laughs> Um, but so between the two of them, um, it's been, uh, oh, what, 43, 44 years. That's crazy. Uh, now, um, is this a job, like if somebody wanted to be the town administrator, do you get a degree in town administration? Yeah, uh, t town administration or political science or some people actually have law degrees, a few of them, or business backgrounds. I, my own uh, background, I went to the University of Pennsylvania undergraduate and they had a program in the Fells Institute, which is, at the time was part of the Wharton School at Penn, which is their business school. And uh, it trained uh, people primarily to go into city management. So um, that was, uh, I went into that right out of undergrad. And then I started out in Arlington and um, from Arlington came out here, so I've only had two jobs in my career. <laughs> I'm not one of these, you know, when I hear that kids today are going to have not only seven different jobs, seven different careers. Right. I say, boy, what, what did I miss out on? <laughs> so, are um, you pretty typical? Do most of the town administrators take a job and stay there? No, no. In fact, I remember when I was graduating uh, from uh, school, and told my father what I was going to do. His reaction was, the only time I've ever heard of city managers is when they're being fired. <laughs> and he's probably right, you know. We That's keep right. A pretty Otherwise, low profile. Go into the... Um, um, but I, I don't... Uh, uh, I, I think the average is probably more like three to five year range. So right. I'm the, uh, the elephant, I guess, in the <laughs> closet or whatever. Now, you're, it's not an elected position. No, I'm appointed by the Board of Selectmen annually, uh, but I did have, one, over the 38 years, I had a contract once, mm -hmm. th I think a three-year contract, and then at the end of that, I didn't see a need to extend the contract, so people ask me what my contract says about, you know, deferred compensation and retirement and vacation, and I say, well, I don't have a contract, so it doesn't say anything. <laughs> I'm an employee at will, I guess you'd call it. So every year the selectmen appoint me, and I used to kid them. I'd say, how do you know I want to stay? <laughs> and they said, it's too late. We've already appointed you. We've already you, appointed so, you. So. Nobody asked you. Yeah. Well, that's So So is that um, after the elections? Do they, do they go through the reappointments? When does that normally happen? Uh, usually it's, uh, yeah, after town meeting. So it's usually sort of around May or June when mm -hmm. they actually start reappointing board and commission members whose terms are up and and then they uh, uh, reappoint uh, uh, reappoint me so um, sometimes they probably don't even remember to do it so maybe I have, <laughs> maybe I'm not even legal <laughs> you're not even appointed <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm sure this has never happened but if if um, somebody in your position there was a problem uh, d is it just you'd wait for the next year and just not appoint them again is uh, yeah, well, that's why most town administrators or town managers have contracts because uh, mm -hmm. the contracts will provide for uh, uh, how that should be handled, whether they're entitled to a public hearing, whether they're entitled to any sort of uh, compensation. Uh, you know, some of them, uh, they get a week's salary for every year they've uh, served in the position, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so usually and uh, it would be covered in an administrator's contract. So um, for some reason I didn't didn't see the need for it. Uh, well, you've been here quite a while. It's not quite, not the turnover yes. that some towns. Right, yes, yeah. I know, and Midfield is kind of unique in that way. I mean, we, we had an employee um, worked in our highway department uh, for uh, well, he worked for the town for 68 years, which has got to be close to a record yeah. anywhere in the country. He started as a part-time employee in the cemetery department when he was 14, 
and he retired from the highway department as a mechanic when he was 82. Oh my goodness, that, um, it does sound like a record. You almost want to check that out to see. Yeah, it would be interesting to check it out. Uh, but we also have uh, our highway foreman, Bobby Kennedy Sr. I think he's got uh, over 50 years. Eddie Hinckley has got uh, close to 50 years. He's well up in the 40s. Uh, Ken Feeney, our public works uh, director or superintendent, he's got, uh, he came a couple years after I did, so he's got about 36 years. Um, and it goes on and on. We just, uh, uh, I was talking to Joy Rusciuto, our town accountant. She's been here about 15 years now. Georgia Calivas, the tax collector, she started with us when she was 14 as a high school kid uh, coming in doing filing. And then she went off to college and uh, she went to Bentley and got her accounting degree and then went to work for a big eight, uh, when they used to have eight big when there accounting were eight firms. Of them? Right. Yes. Uh, and then there was a real estate recession and they eliminated the real estate division. And so she came back uh, and has done a terrific job uh, as our treasurer collector. Uh, Stan Bergeron, who does the appraisal work for the uh, assessing work for the assessors. He's been, now he used to work jointly between Westwood and Medfield, but now he works just for Medfield. And uh, between when he was a joint position and when he works just for Medfield, he's got probably, you know, well over 30 years. That just tells you what a great place this is to live and work. I mean, we've got yes, a great town here. Yes. And you yeah, do have, it's really. nice to have consistency because then from every year, from year to year, it's not changing. Yes, yeah, and uh, uh, you know some of these employees have great institutional history tucked away in their heads. Uh, Eddie Hinckley, mm -hmm. you know, we started GPSing all of our uh, hydrants and shut off valves and everything because Eddie knows where they all are. Where they were, right? Uh, but when Eddie leaves, uh, who's who's going to know? all that well that is it i mean that that does bring up a good point because uh i mean you've been the town administrator for a long time and i don't know if you guys know but he's absolutely amazing in meetings because he can bring numbers just completely out of his head you never have paper as far as i can see well you've seen my desk and <laughs> unfortunately i have too many papers my desk is piled up like the uh the old landfill i'm afraid but but uh, are you but doing do, anything yes. for the future to for the you know, eventually there'll be someone else as a town administrator, not for a really long time, but... Oh, no, I just hit 67 this month, so I am getting up there. Oh. Um, but, um, uh, well, Chris, my assistant, is uh, has picked up an awful lot. She's been there, I think, 13 or 14 years, and Evelyn, the selectman's uh, administrative assistant, has been there for, oh, probably well over 20 years now. Uh, so they have uh, uh, a lot of knowledge, uh, and and so I'm trying to convey as much as I can to uh, people in the town hall that I expect to be there a little, little long after I'm gone. <laughs> uh, you know, we just hired a uh, a new town planner um, when uh, uh, Norma Cronin retired mm -hmm. at the end of the year. Uh, we heard. Um, a gal by the name of Sarah Raposa that had been a planner down in Westport. And um, she's starting to pick up knowledge of the uh, fill in the gaps from the wealth of knowledge that Norma had uh, uh, on the planning and zoning end. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard another guy by the name of Matt Violet as an assistant uh, accountant to work with Joy. And he's, I don't know, 25, 26. So um, he, he's. Uh, starting to pick up a lot. Uh, he had an interesting background. He was an auditor, so he, uh, when the auditors come in, uh, I tell the auditors now, we know what you're thinking because we, right, have, right. we have someone here. So uh, I think one of the biggest things you can do is start, you know, uh, looking at six, what they call succession planning. Mm -hmm. How is it gonna, you know, uh, how is the knowledge gonna be transferred when, when you do leave? Um, and we've been trying to do some of that. Plus the other things like putting as much as possible on GPS. Right. Uh, we have our assessors maps now uh, with, I think we have about 70 layers 
Uh, they can put down stone walls, trees, hydrants, water lines, sewer lines, drains, catch basins. It's um, amazing what you can find online. I've been doing a little bit of yes. walk, walking around the websites to see what's all there. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing today, you know, I, I said, I remember when they used to talk about the paperless office and everything would be so much easier, but now you know, it's like you know, the emails come in faster than you can deal with them. I come in in the morning and there's 60 emails and you clear them all out and you go to lunch and you come back and there's 20 more and you just kind of, half of them are dunk, you know, they well, somehow yeah. you get on some list for, for waste disposal magazines or something and so you get emails about waste disposal every day or you'll get emails about uh, somehow I got on a power list for jobs in the power industry. I don't know how I got on that one but I get those all the time. I'm not so, interested. Yes. So if you were to describe what your job is to somebody who didn't have any idea what would you say? Um, well I'd say it's it's kind of uh, I guess I'm the, the chief administrative officer of the town and uh, my job is basically to keep the selectmen informed because they are my immediate bosses, they're the ones who appoint me and uh, so my primary responsibility is, is to them but beyond that over the years uh, you know it seems like as if I answered everyone. <laughs> um, the Warren Committee spent a lot of time working with the Warren Committee on budgets and Warren articles. Uh, you know, you go to a lot of meetings, uh, whether it's the Historical Commission or the Energy Committee, um, and, you, and you try to uh, keep people working together. I think one of the things that makes Medfield fairly unique is that people get along. I mm -hmm. hear so many stories about um, people fighting with each other in towns, you know, mm -hmm. the, the assessors don't speak to the collector and the collector doesn't speak to the accountant and the public works department is fighting with the schools. Uh, you know, we have uh, a tremendous amount of cooperation between our departments. Uh, police and fire chief uh, work very well together. The police chief works very well with the superintendent you know, mm -hmm. over the past few weeks, all of these uh, decisions about whether to call off school or whether to delay opening. Right. They're both up at four o'clock in the morning checking the weather and checking the roads to see if, uh, uh, whether the school buses should be uh, called out or whether to delay the opening. Uh, our finance department, you know, uh, Joy Rusciuto, the accountant, Georgia Clevis, the treasurer collector, Stan Berger on the assessor's office, and I get together when we're working on the tax rate and we sit down and, and try to uh, figure out where we're going and how much we've got to spend. Mm -hmm. And it's a cooperative effort. It's no, you know, that's not my job, that's not your job. And, and that's true in so many of the departments. I mean, we kid that uh, the school department used to be located in the schools mm -hmm. before we renovated town hall. And, when we renovated town hall, some people, including a lot of people in school, said, you're putting the school department at town hall. That's going to not work. Well, it's worked it's very worked well. fine. Yes, yeah. Well, do you find that most of the people who work at Medfield live in Medfield? It used to be when I came, much more so. Uh, now with the housing prices and and the other thing I think is, is uh, working couples. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll have someone who the wife works in one place, the mm -hmm. husband works in another, and they sort of split the difference on the commute. Right. So it isn't as convenient for them to live in the town, plus the affordability of housing often blocks it. So we are still lucky that we still have quite a number of our employees who live in town. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's probably been increasing now with the uh, the, the police and fire chief living in town, the treasurer collector lives in town, uh, and many of them are nearby. We have a few in Millis or yeah, Franklin. Yeah, practically in so, town, just nearby, yes. really close. Yes, yeah. So you definitely have a sense of community. I, I do feel like um, the, when I go to the town hall, I see people that I see at the grocery store and various places, you just run into yes. people. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's nice, it still has that small town 
mm -hmm. look about it. You know, I've had people say to me, "Well, why do you live in town? Isn't that a kind of a pain in the neck for you? You go to the grocery store." Well, you and never people, get off, right? Yeah, but um, people are pretty good. You know, once in a while, I'll go on. Us the usual question is, "What's happening to Lords? <laughs> you know, what's happening to the Dunkin' Donuts or to the right uh, the gas station or what's happening to the state hospital?" But beyond that, most of the time, people are fine. Yeah. And I like living in town. It, the only disadvantage is you're so close by, it's hard to get out of meetings. Well, that's what I was wondering, yeah. 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 Or you can just run in for a minute, just go do something. Yes, yeah. I was just a kid, I'd say the best thing you can do is when you have three meetings scheduled in one night, because you can skip all three. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you get two, you can get caught. But if you get three, you know, you have, the likelihood of you getting caught is yeah, down everybody's much. everybody's there. Yes, although it's uh, living only two miles away. It, uh, if if somebody drives by and sees the lights on in your house, you, well, you certainly can't go for kind of, a walk. I see you walking around town all right, the time. Yes, yeah. Well, I'm uh, trying to work on the stomach, and uh, <laughs> it gets harder every year. Oh, yeah. uh, I managed to do what 765 miles last year, and I'm up to about 210 this year. So that's crazy. It's ever, it's yeah. good for you. I I, uh, I hope it's good for me. Uh, I like it, yeah. I think it, it should be. It's, um, is there, I, 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 th I seem to recall last year you guys had an intern who came in uh, in the summer. Yes, we have had uh, interns, uh, usually the volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, we they don't get paid. Uh, we've had a couple, we had a student who's a, a law student now at BU. Um, we had uh, a student from Swarthmore who worked for us one summer. Uh, we did have one uh, guy that worked for us a number of years ago, Jimmy O'Neill, who is now a police officer in Medfield. So oh. he's been on our police force for about five years. Um, and uh, uh, so some of them it does uh, influence their career choices. Mm -hmm. Others, at least it gives them to ex some exposure to local government so they know what uh, uh, something about it. So. Yeah, well, I suspect most of the kids nowadays, what they think of town government is what they can see on that Parks and Rec show. Have you ever seen that? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Not too often. I can just. They did have they did have one uh, for about six months on a city manager. I forget who the one was that played it, and it didn't last very long. I guess we're not very exciting. <laughs> Park and Rec has lasted. Was that Amy Poehler or yeah, something? Amy Poehler, yeah, Amy Poehler. Yeah. She's lasted quite long, so apparently Park and Rec has a lot more storylines than <laughs> town managers and town administrators. We're just kind of boring characters that crunch the numbers, I guess. So, um, but um, it, uh, unfortunately, today, you know, I think so many people have so little understanding or idea of government. I'm always amazed when uh, someone's asked who their state representative is, and they'll say, "Oh, you mean?" Uh, Lynch or Barney Frank or something yeah. like that, and you know, say no, 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 that's federal. This is state. There, it seems seems as if almost everybody knew who their representatives and senators were, and now there doesn't seem to be much interest in that. No. But but if you ask people who uh, who won American Idol, I bet a lot of people could tell you that. So, well, that is true. Yeah. I do find though, since this is a small town, that I feel more connected to. Um, the officials and the elected people than I than I did when I lived in a larger city. So that does help. But I think a yes, lot of people does, don't yeah. take advantage of the opportunities that they yes, have. Yes, yeah. Well, I remember talking to my brother one time. My brother worked down in Washington. and I said to him one time, I was down visiting him. He lived uh, not too far from Annapolis. And we went to pick his daughter up and uh, at the library on a Saturday morning. And I were sitting there waiting for her to come out. And I said, is this the center of town? It was a town called Severna Park. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, well, I don't know, it's either here or it's over a couple of miles away. And I said, you mean you've lived in this town for 10 years and you don't even know where the center <laughs> of town is? And he said, well, you know, I spend three hours a day commuting. Right. I, you know, end up arguing all day at work with people over different things. And he said, when I get home at night, I don't want to go out at meetings and argue some more. I want to sit down, have dinner and you know, spend some time with my wife, and and I can understand that. You know, it is, it does, uh, uh, it, and it's tougher now with, as I said, with most families, both spouses work. Right. And so when you get home at the end of the day, uh, 
And these days it seems like you have to run out to endless events that your children are involved with. Yeah, I wonder if, they, so, if they're doing more. I feel, I feel like my kids are doing more than I did growing up. I think up. so. And, and I think, I don't know about you, but when I was young, uh, we didn't want our parents to go to school events. It no, was well, almost I have to like say, you'd my be kids don't necessarily want me there either. But, really, yeah, well, but now I that go. Older, probably, yes. <laughs> Once I get a little, I think they hit the high school, you know, you right. sort of become... They, you walk on the other side of the street sometimes. You know, sometimes so, they yeah. say, my friends will say, did you go to this? And I'll go, what? What? Yes. <laughs> you didn't hear about it. Well, um, as they say, what do they say? <laughs> when your kids become 13, you become awfully mean and stupid. And then when they turn 21, you're suddenly smarting up again. Yeah, so. I'm in the stupid stage right now. <laughs> um, so... Speaking of that kind of thing, do do you uh, is there continuing education that you do as as a town administrator? Uh, there are uh, organizations that you can go to the ICMA, International City Management Association, that uh, uh, has courses that you can take online, and, and there are all kinds of seminars. Uh, I find the thing that helped me the most is I try to read Boston Business Journal and the Wall Street Journal. And that uh, gives me an awful lot of education, and a lot of it is, you know, about things that necessarily you wouldn't get in local government training courses. Right. So I find those much more useful than uh, um, a lot of formal classroom training courses. I mean, though, to me, the classroom training courses are in item-specific agendas. You know, if you if you want to learn about how a wastewater treatment plant is operated or how solar panels. In fact, our, we have a new operator of our wastewater treatment plant who's been on board for about five months now. And he's running a program this Saturday morning for the energy committee down at the treatment plant. He's, it's on solar uh, photovoltaic uh, mm -hmm. panel installations at treatment plants or oh. in general, how you go about arranging leases, how you do financing. And we've invited the Energy Committee, the Water and Sewer Board, the Selectmen, and hoping we get a really good turnout. And then he's going to give a tour of the wastewater treatment plant, um, which is very interesting. You know, people think, oh, I would want to go there. It probably smells. And it really is, is a fascinating tour. Well, I have to say, I, find, I would find that fascinating. Is that something they ever open up to the public? Um, you could probably go to the session Saturday morning if you're interested. I think they'd be glad to have uh, people that uh, come and listen. Oh, okay. So I, I it's not nine, nine o'clock Saturday morning. So right. see, and new things to learn all the time. We've got all sorts of things going on here. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Now, would you, if somebody's going through school and they're thinking about doing something in, you know, government see, in public yeah. service, is is Town administrating something that you would you would recommend? Yes. Um, although I don't know, sometimes I think if you want a life, you probably don't want to get into <laughs> it. So, but yes, I would. Uh, you know, it's an interesting. Uh, when I came in uh, to the field, when I started work in Arlington, we used to have monthly meetings over at a place called Cottage Crest and Waltham. It's not too far from Bentley. It probably isn't even there anymore. Uh, but there were probably maybe 40 people that would attend the meetings uh, statewide. There just weren't that many people. Now you go and there's probably 200 uh, right. at the meetings. And uh, the other interesting thing is there's a lot of women involved uh, in local government. A lot of town administrators now are, are uh, female. Uh, Needham, uh, Sudbury, um, Oh, I've been thinking there's all kinds of towns. Uh, Weston, mm -hmm. uh, all their town administrators are women uh, because they, you know, they have uh, probably as as good, if not better, knowledge of, of local government than men. Many of them have worked uh, the uh, League of Women Voters or mm -hmm. have worked as, you know, aides to legislators, so they have a good background in it, and and in some ways they have a uh, probably a little more patient than men are and dealing with some of the, the minutiae of local government <laughs> it can get pretty frustrating at times. Uh, yeah, I so, suspect you're a very good negotiator. Um, probably, uh, although I, uh, when I first started collective bargaining, I 
had a bit of a temper problem. I would get very frustrated sitting there. I, maybe it was lack of patience more than a temper <laughs> problem. But, um, but um, I've learned to, I don't know whether it's I've learned or, or the aging process <laughs> tempers your, your temper a bit. So, right. uh, but um, yeah, I like uh, dealing with, uh, with people. It's, it's fun. I, I tend to be a bit on the shy side um, and so I think sometimes I don't say too much, although probably if you listen to the selectmen's meeting, when I know people, I open up a lot more, but um, on a first-time basis, I tend to be a bit withdrawn. And uh, s sometimes I can help you in negotiations because right. they wonder what you're, what you're up to. So. <laughs> well, that must be uh, uh, interesting for somebody in your, per your position because I'm sure so many people know who you are and know your name and so they're coming up and talking to you and you don't necessarily know them that must be a challenge yes it is um, one of the saving graces is i tend to mumble i don't talk very loud and a lot of people have trouble hearing me so uh, sometimes that can get you through <laughs> situations where you're not quite sure of a name nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, it do, and particularly since cable started, you know, uh, a lot of people who still wouldn't know who I was, uh, but because they'll see in cable. In fact, I stopped for a sandwich at one of the sub shops in town, and and uh, the uh, guy that waited on me was was saying he had seen me on on TV, and I said, well, I'm going down in about a half an hour. That's an old one. That was last month's show. And I said, I'm going down this afternoon to do some more. Uh, but I think that there is more recognition because of cable, and particularly in Medfield, I think cable does a terrific job. The the variety shows, and I mean, I watch probably as much cable as as anything else because uh, I love to watch the the uh, music programs from the high school and middle school. Um, I like to watch. Uh, I'm fascinated with some of the interviews that Ann Thompson does mm. with. Uh, Elizabeth Mann, and uh, there was a guy, she had a guy on that had polio, that was fascinating. And then she had the uh, Italian experience in, in Medfield, so uh, those shows are really, you know, the Historical Society puts on great I shows. I love those. those I, I yes. have to say, I agree, yeah. I, and, and you do feel like you're, you're learning things, but you're also learning things about right right yes. here. I yeah. like that documentary that Richard DeSorga did about the King Philip War. I yeah, mean, yeah. It, yeah, it's, and I, I do agree with you, sometimes you're here at the studio and you're doing shows, but you don't know if anybody's watching, but then you run into people. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. kind of a big deal, I get recognized around town too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we say. And my family are always like, well, you know, mom's kind of a big uh, deal. <laughs> well, my problem right now is, is uh, a few people think I'm running for the U.S. Congress <laughs> uh, for a carry seat because there's a guy from the uh, South Shore by the name of Mike Sullivan that's running. Yeah. So a couple of people have, have uh, been asking if I was the one running for for Did they Harry say they were going to vote for you? So, uh, <laughs> I hope not. I, I don't know what I would ever have done to, to hurt them that badly that they would want to give me that job. <laughs> Who'd want it? <laughs> Especially uh, these days. I uh, don't know why anybody would want to work down there. So. Well, Mike, thank you so much for, for joining us and talking so freely about your position. I hope that, uh, that anybody who might be interested in uh, being a town administrator has learned something. I hope so, and, and I'm always uh, glad to talk to anybody who is interested in going in that field. I think, as I said, particularly these days, I think it's a, it's a great field for women to get into because uh, they're good at it. So. Well, and that's good to know. And, um, and I have to say, personally, I found Mike very, very approachable. I, unfortunately for him, I know his number by heart, so I can call him anytime I want. <laughs> um, but thank you again, and thanks for joining us at Local Politics 101. Bye bye.
production support provided by Medfield.tv. Access to our community.